All right, so here's where I'm at. I've got the uh, PVC board, and again, this stuff is three quarters of an inch thick. And there's a uh, wood grain side to it, and then there's a smooth side. They consider it convertible. Now, when I run it through the router, or run the router on it, I want the router to be on the wood grain side of it, so that's going to be the top. And to me, it has less friction uh, on the router plate. So, since all the routing from the CNC is done actually on the back side, I've got an 11-inch piece. And if it's off by just a hair, not big, not a big deal again, because I do everything from center. So I measured to five and a half, and then this way I'm going to measure to two and three quarter. I make my little circle in the middle, and then we're going to carry that over to the CNC machine. So a real quick intro to my custom CNC table or bed. I have tracks, T-tracks on both sides, aluminum. I have a basically two spoiler boards, or really almost three. Um, but I have I, I only everything I do is only about three quarters of an inch, sometimes an inch thick. So I don't need all the height of the bit to cover all other kinds of things. And then I put a spoil board on here, which is a half inch MDF. The screws that hold that in are so far forward and so far back that the bit could never travel that far, so there's no metal ever within contact. And then there's these pegs that get placed, and I do those manually. I just manually bring the CNC bit over to where I need it, like in this case. This is our um, five and a half by 11 inch board. And I put a peg here that I bump it to that's the starting point. That's as far forward as the bit could ever go anyhow. And then I have a pin here, a pin here, a pin here, and a pin here. And then on the back side, I have a um, maple. This is, happens to be a hard maple. And then there's two sacrificial. These are Actually, the pins can be placed in all these different holes for different reasons, for different thicknesses. But I've had those two lined up so that I can just turn the, the nuts into the track that locks down the back of that board or or pvc and then this one i bring in manually from the front again all those holes and then the pegs right there those are sacrificial you can see they get pretty beat up because they will occasionally get hit by the router then i run that into here so this does two things these two pieces the pegs are going to push down on the pvc but the maple itself also becomes the stop. So if there's any pushing forward by the bit of the piece, it can't come forward because the this gets locked down. And that's not going to budge either. So basically, I have all positions locked. I have locking from the left, locking over here from the right, so it can't go sideways. I have locked down, locked down, and then I have lock from going backwards and lock from going forward. Now all I got to do is just do the uh, typical setup. So because the bit's already kind of close to the board, I'm just going to set it at, at slow for my manual stuff. And then the bit is again pretty close to that mark that I made on the pencil. So I'm just going to go down manually until it gets pretty close and then do my left, right, back, forward, that sort of stuff. Now that it's pretty close, I can turn it on. I mentioned this somewhere, but I want to be able to make sure I go fully through the board, so I set that just slightly below the surface. That'll be fine. There aren't anything, anything that's going to be that much of an issue. Then now that I've got that all set to go, I'm going to do my zero X, Y, Z, say OK, and then put my USB in the side pocket. This thing goes going kind of hard. There we go. OK, so that's in there. Now the USB is in there and I have only one file showing up on the USB, which is all I really typically want. That's the TAP file for the combo template from today. I'm going to hit that. I'm just going to double check my piece, so 5.5 by 11 by 0.75. Next, I don't want to hit start because the router's not turned on, so I'll turn on the router. It's 
start. And now the rest of it, as they say, is history. It's going to run. And hopefully do everything I told it to. In the fuel tank. So right now it's creating a slot for the plywood. So right now it's making these green lines. Those are a, a half inch, 0.5 deep. And there's a couple down here as well. It's going to do all those. Don't know if you caught that, but that's where it hit the sacrificial peg. It's it no big deal. It's a quarter inch uh, dollar. So now it's making the peeps right here. There's one here, here, up here. Those are it's those uh, peep holes that we can see the pencil mark on the board later. Those are full through. So now it's carving out that red area there. That's full through. So that's at point eight. That's gonna be the where the router, uh, the guide goes along the edge of that. And then there's gonna be another one down here and another one down here. This is kind of a time-consuming part of it. And I mentioned earlier that I could do this via a different method where I use tabs, but it just doesn't seem to pay, to, sit, to save me much time on doing that because then I have to manually do some stuff later. So this will just take a little while to do. on what it's supposed to do next. That's the dust room. We'll see how that works out in the router. It's a place for the dust to go from the router so that the the uh, guide machine doesn't bump against dust. Okay, so it finished up with that little, um, that's where we can cut off, that's the halfway mark. 
don't really need it we could measure and get the same thing but it's kind of fun to put that on there so now it's a matter of taking it out of the bed So just releasing the two wing nuts in the back and sliding that back a little bit. Releasing the two front wing nuts just a little bit. This one has to come off because the board has to come out forward. So I just set that aside. And then if the bit's too close and this doesn't want to come up, then I just manually go up and raise the thing that allows it to clear. That way I don't have to pull any of that, that front pin or any of the two side pins. I can just lift it up, pull it right out. And basically it's ready for the next one. I could just put another piece in there. I would reconfirm the zero XYZ axis, but and I don't really have to. So here's our template. Uh, this is, again, this is going to be the bottom. This is the smooth side. So it's going to go down like that. And you can see all that's on top is... The router where the router is going to go so you don't have the slots coming up to the top because I, I used to do that but then those slots go full through then every once in a while your plywood goes through full through and then it interferes with the base of the router uh, here these are um, those are peepholes so we want those to go full through because we're going to be able to see down onto the pencil marks on the boards here here these are all at center point this is a longer peephole, but that only works when we are using the four inch piece. There's a four inch piece that's going to go in here. Then we can see the line, but um, it's not going to work when we when the board is only two inches wide. We're not going to be able to see it. So that's why this, the, the second hole in there. And then these slots going this way. Now those are going to be used when we put the change the orientation on the template. Uh, here's again that cut piece. If I wanted to, I could put that on the miter saw, put the miter saw blade, the, the light right down the middle of that, and then we'd have an exact, we'd have two pieces. Sometimes that comes in, just makes it a little easier. Again, we're on the bottom side now, right? So again, I have slots here that are going to go next to, that's for the two inch area. This is only used on the two inch side, so I don't need a four inch going out the other direction, at least not that I know of. Here's what you're going to see from the top. And again, I didn't want to I wanted to leave this section in, in the middle, because that is where those five holes get used. If we're going to do a Forstner bit type of uh, mortise, those are those are basically for dimpling the wood, and then we'll go over the Forstner after that. But this here also becomes the router area. Everything's spaced so that that guide bushing will still fit in there and just follow those rounded corners quite nicely. Another one here. And so you can see it's going to gouge out most of that end grain. It's just going to leave a little bit right in here and here. And that we can't do anything about. And But other than we'll, we'll take it out manually. So there's the template. We're going to go into the other side. That's what it looks like. And the template is done.